uh, Pelham. Oh, okay. Tony couldn't make it. Right. So Bob is here. So, so we have all three communities represented as well as our community advocates. So, as well as Dwayne and Riverback with us. So, um, so thank you everyone for being here for our Rally Green Energy Working Group meeting. Uh, we're meeting today with Dwayne Bregger and River Strong, who produced a report regarding the CCA um, back when we were trying to summarize, you know, uh, the effort and our intentions for moving forward. So today we're going to reassess our goals and have a talk about where we are now and whether we still align with our our um, plan to move forward with a joint power entity and how that's all going to work. So I guess um, I don't know the best way to sort of move this forward. I didn't know if Duane or and or River, you wanted to maybe give a quick summary or if you were prepared to do so. Um, not pre prepared in any formal sense, but happy to just uh, first um, say hi to everybody again and um, been um, kind of lurking <laughs> uh, around the working group as we, I think River and I are both been maintained on the uh, mailing list, uh, but have sort of taken a um, backseat in terms of the uh, all, the tremendous progress that's taken place since, uh, since the report. Um, and... Um, already signed up for um uh the the 100% green and ready to go and really exciting and and just a big thanks and congratulations to everybody for getting it this far and and also recognizing that um Ben's joined the group uh so great to see you Ben um and uh doing good work for Northampton we miss you here uh but uh doing great work so uh that's great um and um I guess what I what I like to first say is that yes, River and I uh, did prepare the report. It's not our report; it was our working group's report. Um, uh, we we had the time, I guess, and and uh, role to uh, kind of articulate uh, the sense of the uh, of the group uh, uh, as a whole. Uh, so it's very clearly uh, not the report of the Clean Energy Extension on this effort, but a a a, a report from all of us uh including including the the work the working group uh the community groups uh and the and the towns um i think what's in a couple things to sort of just remember or keep in mind is that um what was the date on the report it was like was it four years ago <laughs> um uh 2020 yep yeah, so four 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 plus years ago um so a lot has changed uh, obviously uh since then uh, so recommendations that were made four years ago are not necessarily um, the same as would be made today. Uh, but I think what um, the report, I think what's important in the report, at least for today's discussion, are two main things. One is um, that I think there was pretty much consensus amongst the working group that, um, and, and this is maybe important just for historical purposes for the new new newer members Ben so forth um that there was just re very strong consensus amongst the working group that the purpose and really passion that the working group and the towns had in forming the CCA for the three towns uh was really to get to this notion of not just a CCA 2.0 uh as it's really it stands now uh but also to uh use this as a pathway to embrace uh, some of the 3.0 uh, visions and, and ideas um, that we talked about a lot and are articulated in the report. Uh, and I think that, and I hope, just personally, I hope that remains the case uh, uh, at this point uh, today as we now begin to launch or are, are launching the CCA. Um, the second thing I think germane to this conversation today is that, um, well, first is that I think that's the primary object, you know, primary recommendation and sort of outcome of the working group was that really was our mission. The recommendation in the report uh, that to accomplish this outcome, that there was a, a recommendation certainly in the report four years ago to that it would be best to do this through the formation of a of a joint powers entity, a JPA, a JPE, um, that 
in my mind, that's really, uh, and that's, uh, I, from what I understand, is up for some discussion today. Um, that's, I think that can be kind of looked at in the context of that's a means to an end. We're really focused on the end, uh, which is this 3.0 uh, type of uh, attributes associated with our CCA, more uh, local control, resiliency, uh, greenhouse gas reductions, um, economic support, um, even en en uh, energy services for the community. Um, the JPA, JPE was recommended as the best, uh, at the time, recommended, recommended as sort of the pathway to get there. Um, uh, and I, I, in, in a conversation River and I, and I had before that, we, we don't feel like we're expert or in the trenches enough to know whether that still hand still holds true today uh in terms of what the uh what the um best path forward is to get to that three point uh cca 3.0 attributes um but i think we can all hopefully agree that that still remains our objective uh as was laid out in terms of really dr driving um towards the uh towards the additional attributes associated with the cca 3.0 um, recognizing that, um, you know, and I, I was in state government, as you know, um, and one thing I think that, well, Ben, Ben will learn if he hasn't already, Stephanie knows, uh, is that patience is key and things take arduously long periods of time to, 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 to move forward. And that can be, um, that can be frustrating and it's not to suggest we shouldn't, uh, and this group shouldn't move this along as quickly as possible, but um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if we were all anticipating four years later that we would finally be we would be able to launch something, and we wanted to do it more like in a year. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Maybe that's a a, a preamble uh, to to help get going. Uh, let me ask River if he has anything to add to that. I, I did. Let me just also say I think uh, thank you for bringing us back into this discussion to be as helpful as we can. Um, uh, again, we, we're coming in to this with um, without with some historical knowledge, but not with the um, familiarity of all the wonderful progress and conversations you've all had in the uh, almost uh, four years, probably since we've been uh, deeply involved. Thanks, Dwayne. Yeah, hi, everybody. It's um, great to be back together with those we were working with and see some new folks and see you, Ben. Uh, I'm uh, really glad to be back in this mix and learn about all the progress that's been made. It's been exciting to see Valley Green Energy launch and to have played some role in it in the uh, beginning years. Um, and yeah, happy to be back in this conversation. I think Dwayne pretty well covered it. We we were really, I think UMass and CE were brought in to help support the process from a clean energy and climate change perspective. Uh, but one of the overarching aims, as I remember it and remembering from the report and rereading, that was, was the reduction of greenhouse gases was an overarching goal as well as reduced costs um, and the ability to pull together local distributed energy and reduce peak loads and that kind of thing. So the CCA 3.0 was really what we were aiming toward. And as Dwayne mentioned, the JPE, I think we came across that concept when we talked, we, we reviewed several different community choice aggregation models. So I think from California, we reviewed some papers and maybe talked to folks and also to the, the Cape Light Compact. And I think the Cape Light Compact was did form a JPE to help make that happen maybe back in the teens, 2017, I think. So um, we were working with that as the, the whole task force was working with that as an operating model and one that we ended up putting into this. Uh, but as Dwayne said, things do change. So uh, absolutely glad to be in on the conversation again and help review if that if that's still relevant and still the most efficient way to move forward. Um, I'll also just say that, again, looking at the report that Pioneer Valley Planning Commission was also in on that conversation as part of the task force. I don't know if they're still part of the task force, but they might also be able to provide some, some uh, input on the JPE and any other questions that are coming up. But thanks again for inviting us and happy to be in the discussion. 
Thank you both so much. Um, so I guess I, I want to maybe start by um, first stating that, you know, I did read through the report again. And I first want to say that, you know, the goals of what we want to do, um, at least for me personally, and I think for the town, still remain. I don't think there's any question that those values and the things that we want to achieve are still important. What I'm questioning, at least at this stage right now, was the push to form the joint powers entity right now. Um, I don't know that I think that that's the best way to get things done. I think there's programming that we can do without it even being in place. I think we can do it in collaboration with Leah, especially now that you have an advocacy organization that's uh, you know, a separate nonprofit. I think that's gonna make collaboration easier. Um, it's not to say that I don't think we should do this eventually, but I just feel like it's it's just way too early. I'm really concerned about the ability to sustain it financially, to keep it going. Um, we don't even know um, our membership rate quite yet. I did ask Paul Gromer. He doesn't have that right now. He will get us that information, but he doesn't have it. Um, the membership list hasn't been finalized yet, but I guess it's in the works. So, um, you know, I have some real concerns. I don't personally want to start something that we can't continue. And I would like us to do this when we feel like we have solid footing and can ensure it can proceed successfully. So that's where I'm coming from. And um, I don't know if the other two communities want to weigh in first, and then we can have a broader discussion. Um, or Darcy, I know you want to respond, but um, I, I didn't know if the other two communities wanted to sort of say something first. So can we just let them have an opportunity and then I'll get to you? This is Bob Agolia from Pelham. Uh, Stephanie, what you said made a whole lot of sense to me. Um, and I certainly uh, will um, support moving in the direction that you described. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll basically echo Stephanie. Uh, I mean, the main the main thing is uh, to to however we accomplish those goals uh, to have a plan that allows it to be funded. Uh, you know, and and um, and that's increasingly challenging at, um, at least right now. Um, and um, I, I don't think. I don't think there's harm in demonstrating the value of of, of a CCA 2.0 to the community before pushing further, uh, especially if that adds a mill or two to the the cost per uh, per kilowatt hour. Darcy, you want to go ahead? Yeah, yeah, we, we um, the three of us, Andra, Adele, and I sort of um, designated me as to make the points about the, a little bit about the background that we experienced and also to talk a little bit about the benefits of, of um, having a JPE or some structure that would allow us to do what we had originally envisioned. Um, so, back um you know the reason for us as advocates to push this in the first place was um as um Dwayne said to to create a so-called 3.0 CCA um because we were very inspired by what California was doing in Cape the Cape Light Compact and so on um and we assumed that based on the whole climate change issue and the urgency of it, that we should be going for the most robust kind of aggregation that we could. And that doing it as a joint effort was a way to get it started. We saw the California uh, CCAs were mostly joint power powers entities and they were representing a whole county, so many municipalities. And they were able to scale up and do really big projects based on that. So we started 
thinking that we would just focus on Amherst, Northampton and Pelham because that was manageable to start with. But there was always the thought that we wanted to be able to scale it up to have a very um, much larger organization. Um, so that was one of the big benefits that we were looking for. Um, in order to to multiply the the benefits to all these other communities. Um, so, uh, you know, we started way back in 2016 and 2017, the advocates to work on this. Um, and in 2017, Amherst passed a resolution about aggregation, uh, focusing on the fact that we wanted it to be 3.0-ish, <laughs> looking at um, uh, distributed energy resources locally and um, really focusing on having a robust uh, aggregation. It did state specifically with the joint powers entity. Um, and um, as you know, we, we worked for years uh, on this in the context of, of first the task force. That was a couple of years and I'm so happy that Dwayne and River could be here to talk about this because of the fact that they were there. We met every two weeks for a couple of hours and um, had a cast of different players and including um, Wayne Fiden and Chris Mason from, from uh, Northampton. They devoted two full-time staff to it and um, Catherine Rate from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, and our UMass representatives, as well as three community members and the staff from the, from the communities. So um, after the task force report, we got to work writing the, the CCA document. Um, uh, and then when we finished that, we worked on and finished the JPE document. Uh, we, there was a lot of delay involved over that period of time, but it did eventually get um, finished and signed off by the lawyers just, oh, when was that? At the end of 2021. Um, uh, so that was, a, we, it was kind of a, a shock to the system to then not be going forward with it. Uh, Paul Gromer from Mass Power Choice had meanwhile started talking to us. We didn't have a contract with them until 2022, but Paul um, urged us to include the JPE in our CCA application to make it a smoother transition to that, if that's where we were eventually going. But that, um, I think the delay in getting it done prevented that from happening. If somebody else has a different interpretation, please tell us after I'm done. But um, then in uh, 2021, um, we the advocates had been operating as Western Mass Community Choice Aggregation for the first couple of years. And then we changed our name and became local energy advocates with the intent of being a partner organization for the for the joint powers entity. Um, we had had conversations with California JPEs um, and uh, nonprofit organizations that worked with the JPEs and got the definite impression that it was helpful to have a partner organization that could not only potentially raise funds, but do outreach and um, have provide community input, community feedback. So um, because we learned that, we decided to form local energy advocates. Um, and we started off with um, we started off with um, raising funds and doing, we decided we would just do small projects until things got rolling. Uh, but we did have had the intent all along of going for larger money. 
for larger innovative projects. Um, the fact that we are a little stymied on creating a JPE has sort of slowed us down uh, on that because we would like to um, have a more robust organization that is meeting and talking about, even though there will be, you know, will take time and there will be delays and so on, that at, we at least need to be talking about what are we going to do? What are the innovative programs that we're going to work on? Um, and so um, we are still hoping for that. And the, the, the benefits that we, you know, basically have listed that we think that the, the organization should have are in being a JPE are that the communities are not liable. That there is a liability issue that communities are liable for the acts of other communities that are protected under the JPE law from that. And um, the ability to scale up um, which I think if you were involved in these conversations along the way, we had unbelievably long discussions about scaling up, adding Springfield, what, how, to, how to make um, the board votes equitable when you have small towns and large towns and getting that into the, the voting sections of the JPE. Um, so massive amounts of time gone into the discussions about this. Um, we obviously want to be able to do these innovative projects, especially, um, you know, microgrids, battery storage, um, local DER, um, and very importantly, the, the JPE uh, includes the ability to have a community advisory committee which we have assumed was an important part of this whole project, which all of the JPEs have in California. And um, we had set it up in our JP that, that there would be representatives of the community advisory committee that would be non-voting members of the, of the JPE board. So um, for all those reasons, you know, we are hoping for a robust organization that is proactive, looking at what we can do to act with urgency about the climate. So I'm done, but Adele wants to add something. <laughs> First, I have to unmute. So um, I don't think any of us were thought that we would be satisfied with the CCA 2.0. And uh, that's what we have right now. And um, and so if, if it's a stepping stone to a CCA 3.0, um, then that would be good. But I, I would like, personally, I would like some assurance that we are headed in that direction, whether it takes a couple more years or not. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I just really don't have any interest in pursuing this, um, given that we're, um, we just have a regular old CCA. So anyway, that's my point of view. Ben? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that is the right place to jump off, <laughs> is, um, you know, so so there's this list of goals, including infrastructure projects, building microgrids, building distributed energy resources that could be utility scale solar fields. You know, it could could be any, or it could be a distribution of solar on a variety of roofs that's coordinate. You know, like there's a whole bunch of things you can do, and the question is, um, why? do we believe that a CCA is the best mechanism or the best organizing unit to be able to accomplish those things? 
fundamentally, those things are all, all something that require a project designer, a project manager, and a, fine, and a source of financing, right? <laughs> and so what aspect of the CCA or this joint powers entity that's going to run the CCA does those things? And I mean, as, as I'm looking at it right now, and I'm just going to be uh, brutal about it with 11 cents from Eversource, um, you know, how, how do you, uh, where, where's, we don't know how many people will un, unenroll. I, I, I don't know anything about, about how people are motivated. Inertia tends to, to win the day. Um, but, uh, you know, presumably it's that one mill that's supposed to finance this JPE. And so, I don't know how much money that turns out to, and that presumably covers the salary of, I think, like a person. Um, and that might be enough to go out and solicit funds and find investors and 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 do some of these projects. Um, but like to me, it's just about is there enough money coming from the CCA to support additional projects? So it, I don't know if anyone can answer that one. I can't. <laughs> um, I'll jump in real quick, um, Ben, because I think that's the point. I think I want to go back to how I even started at the beginning, which was to say, I'm not opposed to doing this eventually. I'm just saying that now, to me personally, this does not seem the time. And I've been part of this effort from the very beginning as well. So I have been at the table and I have been in the discussions and I do understand that I've had a shift in my um, thinking about it because I also think I have a much better, clearer understanding too of um, operations and how things work a bit more. And I that I didn't really have, I think, in the beginning because this has been a long process, right? And we've had a lot of discussions. For me, part of the, the fact that we had as many discussions as we had about bringing in other communities and how the voting would work. And it got so complicated that to me, that's part of the problem is it's like ridiculously complicated. Like I felt like that was, that was really tough. That was really challenging. And I don't know if we ever really satisfactorily, we came to sort of some kind of middle ground, but I don't think it fully covered some of the concerns of certain people at certain points. So I'm concerned about that. Um, I want to go back to Amherst's vote. Amherst did not vote only to create a JPE. They said an aggregation or a jump joint powers agreement. It was not a vote specifically for a jump joint powers agreement. So I want to be clear about that, that that was the vote in Amherst. So I personally think that we can do a lot of the things that you want to achieve now with partnering um, and the concern that community, there isn't a community advisory group. You've been a community advisory group all along. You've been part of this and you are now creating another group, Local Energy Advocates, and now you're representing that sort of larger entity and you're here at the table still. So we're still having conversations and we're still talking about things. Um, I think for for me too, I feel like there are things that we've been able to do as a municipality with some funding, like the heat pump program. We've contracted with the Center for Ecotechnology. The Amherst um, heat pump program is gonna launch the first quarter of 25. Um, we're trying to get some pilot residents to start that effort. Um, I think that's a great opportunity for some collaboration. You know, I, I think there are efforts and efforts and opportunities that we can work together. And I do think we can be at the table and we can collaborate with one another. I don't think it's an either or. I don't feel like I am working for the municipality in a vacuum ever. I feel like there's a lot of community engagement in everything that I do. And it may not be with you all specifically, but there's certainly other people in town that I engage with on certain projects. So I, I feel like there's a concern about that, but I, I'm not sure it's fully warranted. 
because I do think we've been together all along. So um, those are just some of my initial thoughts uh, right now um, in response to some of what you said, Darcy. And, um, yeah. and Adele, just to your point, you know, I could see this maybe in a few years, but until we accumulate funds sufficiently to support this, I'm really, I am concerned because I don't know if we start something, I don't want to start something that we can't continue. And I'm concerned about the ch the change in the utility Eversource's basic rate, you know, changing in February to be lower than Valley Green Energy. It was really concerning to me. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll stop talking and let someone else Ooh. take the baton from here. I mean, I feel like I, I, I'd like to just add a little, so I was not here for any of the discussions <laughs> that led up to, up to this. I, so I'm, I'm at the end, but I did spend a lot of time in California. I, I came from California and I actually studied California re renewable energy policy. Like that was literally in my dissertation. <laughs> so, um, and one of the things that makes easier for them to do more with CCAs than it is for us is, be, is a, a few things. One, our structure really doesn't have counties and their structure really, really has counties. Our structure is always towns. Um, their governmental structure also has layered on top of it all sorts of districts. So they've got water districts because there it's, it's a big issue. Um, and so a joint powers entity is really just a, another layer, another, another governmental layer in, in their structure that's like a water district. Um, and so they already have kind of a structure already built in. So all those discussions about adding towns and who would do the voting and all that stuff is kind of ported in. It's already, it's already built in. And then the third really big difference is that they have universally uh, smart meters and time of use billing. And we have none of it, right, except for Holyoke. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that means that not only are, so when you're, if, if a CCA, if the primary thing it does is procure electricity, right, that, and, and they, uh, they, deregulated their electricity market just before we did. Like they were just a little bit ahead of us, but kind of in history, we're very close in time. Um, but they very, very quickly went to uh, smart meters and time of use rates. And that meant when you were uh, creating a market for the supply side of that electricity bill, you were also able to create a market for different time of use supply side of the electricity bill. And that is the key thing that allows a CCA to have a clean peak because they've actually pre-procured some power plant that's that's capable of turning on, or, or uh, I'm thinking of, uh, of Napa, where they've actually got like a, 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 a battery and, uh, you know, a battery entity that's there to, pro to provide them a clean peak. And they can do that because they're buying different time of use at different rates. And so some of that is stuff that we're just not capable of doing here, I don't think, at least not yet, not without DPU changing a whole lot of stuff in Massachusetts. Um, so in some ways, I mean, there are lots of other reasons why they're ahead of us in terms of total renewables deployment. Uh, but that's some of it. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for bringing that up, Ben, because that reminded me of one of the points that I wanted to make about came, like Compact is that, yes, they they became a joint powers entity, but they also started right out the gate with 21 communities. So I feel like they already had an opportunity to sort of leverage those adder funds to sort of work for them, right? pretty much probably fairly soon after they launched. Um, so I think that's where I feel like we're really at a disadvantage. Bob, you've been, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adele. What I recall um, Maggie 
saying to us is that um, they started out as an MOU, under an MOU with 21 communities, but then they, the liability issues was what they what convinced them to go with um, this, the J joint powers entity. And I, I don't know what concerns they had about liability, but that's a fact. Thank you. I mean, just just think about the concerns we had about liability when LEA wanted to do more outreach and they wanted names and, and addresses of, of, of customers who might have been missed. And we had this worry about liability as municipalities that once we know it, it becomes part of public record. And then if something bad happens to somebody because they accessed something due to public record, the, the municipalities could be on the hook. So I could imagine that the JPE, instead of the consultant, right? Our, our workaround is, well, we didn't touch it. It's just the consultant. It, a JPA, JPE may be able to protect liability that way. Dwayne. Yeah, great, thanks. Um, let me just build on, on a little bit what Ben was talking about uh, with regard to um, some of the barriers, but also maybe inform uh, resurrect some ideas that I, I think were discussed four years ago as a group. Uh, yes, with with the fact that we don't have smart meters, uh, we don't have time of day rates, um, that that is a big disadvantage, if you will, with regard to um, market designs and so forth. But one thing we, for example, that we talked about and and. and Keep in mind in you know four or five years we may have uh maybe um transitioning to um uh some of that smart metering uh that certainly is, is in discussion <clears throat> it's a vast uh investment but really critical for this transition uh but i think we also talked about and again i'm not expert at all in terms of some of the legal and liability issues which obviously are particularly concerned but um you know one way we thought that a 3.0 uh could could provide benefits um, with local um, resources uh, and then benefits to the, our ratepayers. Where even without in the absence of um, time of use rates, was if we had uh, projects, and I'm, I'm I'm sort of bringing this up uh, and also demonstra demonstrating that I, I don't know if it needs a JPA or not. It seems like it could be done without a JPA, but if there's projects in front of us, and I'm thinking of maybe the lost opportunity at the um just the projects i'm aware of the the um uh, hickory ridge solar project for example which is now kind of passed but uh there may be prospects for solar projects on some of our municipal buildings in amherst with storage uh and i'm sure there's opportunities in in uh, northampton and pelham as well uh or or on private properties that could be and they may move forward just like Hickory Ridge is moving forward um, in with uh, private developers and partnerships and, and permit permittings with the towns and so forth, separate from the CCA. But if we bring that those types of projects into the CCA, just for an example, distributed energy resource, solar on a, a school building of, of significant size uh, with battery storage, and we incorporate that into the supply with our with our supplier, um uh uh as part of our supply stream then the supplier uh we can demonstrate that part of our supply is coming from uh from local solar so we've already added some of the clean energy that we we need uh plus with the battery storage we can dispatch that during peak times uh so that our supply um can can uh, mitigate some of the risk uh, for the supplier to make sure that they get supply uh, during peak times which hopefully then um, arguably should lead to some cost reductions in the um, procurement of that supply. Um, so I bring that up sort of as one example that may be, a cap may be capable of doing even in the absence of everybody having smart meters and time of day rates, uh, but also something that I'm not sure why that, um, uh, what the benefits would be with a JPE or 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 just as a, uh, project that local advocates would be supporting and the community and the towns would be supporting as well. 
Thanks, Dwayne. I just very quickly want to say that Hickory Ridge wasn't a lost opportunity because the town, um, the developer, the property owner maintained that land for that solar development. So the town doesn't own that. Um, they just basically have a lease. So um, okay, and I, I wouldn't so just I'm just saying that just to clarify because some people think that that was a town owned project. It's not. So I just yeah. wanted to. Be yeah, clear. yeah, yeah. No, um, sure. Bob, go ahead. You're muted, Bob. Sorry. I'm wondering whether we are um, perhaps uh, disagreeing over an issue of timing here. Um, I'm feeling um, uh, like the least informed of all of you in terms of the history of, of this organization. Um, but one of the things that be, that became is becoming clear to me is the un, the unknowns that we're dealing with in this moment related to the CCA. And the big deal about that, of course, is the number of subscribers and the amount of revenue essentially that we will earn. And now we have this new factor of um, uh, Eversource's reduction in their rate that could further uh, create problems there. So um, I'm feeling like we're at a, a fragile moment <laughs> in the uh, launching, if you will, of this endeavor, which has taken so, so long um, to, to happen. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying that's the reality. And you know that better than I do because some of you have been involved for a very long time. Um, so I, I, I don't, I'm not sure that there's a disagreement about the future direction at all. I think it's a, what, we're, what we're talking about here is the potentially just timing. Um, and um, I, for one, would really hope to see a healthy um, CCA, but <laughs> I'm not sure yet. So there we go. Adele. I uh, just wanted to point out an additional benefit of the JPE, which is that the JPE can own things. Whereas, for example, the solar array on the capped landfill in Northampton, my understanding is um, that <clears throat> it's owned by a different entity. Um, and Northampton benefits from that in a variety of ways. Um, but that in X number of years, the ownership will cease to be um, with that entity. And, um, and then my understanding is that the municipality can't own it, whereas the JPE could. So I just wanted to point that out. I don't think that's true that it can't own it. It doesn't own it because at the time, we could, uh, a municipality couldn't get any tax incentives because they didn't pay taxes, right? So now huh, for, the, for two years, maybe, perhaps longer, there's direct pay, which means that nonprofits and uh, municipalities can get tax benefits. Once they can do that, then they can Th then they can own it because it, it makes sense to them. So it was financed in such a way that someone else could take the tax benefit. And the uh, city made an agreement, a long-term agreement to basically transfer those credits, uh, transfer net metering credits to the city. It's like community solar in a certain sense, except it's a much, much better deal. Like, I mean, it's just... It, it just as it was negotiated. So that's that's great for the city. Um, it caused an, a solar field to be developed that otherwise would not be. Um, once it uh, hands, uh, once, you know, once their contract ends, the city does have the option to own it. Um, and we could, basically we just have to do the math uh, and to, to make sure it makes sense. Um, it's also true that like a, if a JPE doesn't cost much to have it exist, there are lots of benefits, right? Quite frankly, you know, it's like this entity that's going to run your CCA, presumably it elects a board and it, you know, has some sort of representation, you know, however it's organized. That's, that's all great. And that's, that part's 
either free or for, fairly inexpensive. <laughs> and, um, you know, so I have no objection to creating it if it can basically be afforded, right? You know what I mean? If, 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 if we can be certain that we're not putting the cities or the, the municipalities on the hook to support something with their taxpayers' dollars that is not being simply supported by profit from the CCA or revenue from the CCA. As long as that's an ironclad uh, limitation, I mean, there's no reason not to create it. It probably makes life easier. I don't know if Bob and Stephanie agree or disagree with that <laughs> framing. Um, yeah, no, I, I I think I do agree with that. Um, I think it's kind of what I was saying in the beginning. And I um I think I have concerns. I, I too would maybe like to take some time, as Bob said, to let our aggregation sort of build out and to spend the time really trying to promote and get as many people to become members as possible. Like, I really feel like that's where the emphasis should be right now and building that out. Um, I do have incredible concerns that in our first month of launch, we find out that our rate is going to be higher than the utility. I can't tell you that. I mean, maybe you all felt the same way. It felt like a real gut punch to me. Um, personally, I was really upset. I am upset actually. Um, because we put so much into promoting this. And I know that we didn't ensure people that their rates would be lower. We certainly always said we can't guarantee it, but I don't think any of us anticipated that it would happen this quickly. Um, um, and that I'm just gonna sort of segue really quickly to that I did talk to Paul Gromer once he sent me that email. I had a quick conversation with him and I said that I assumed that this group would want to have a conversation with him. So he was willing to meet with us as soon as next week, next Wednesday, and he was available at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. I'm sorry if that's not ideal for people. Um, if you want to put it off till the following week after Thanksgiving, I can, but um, I just got it on as soon as possible now. Um, I did post it to make sure that I didn't forget it this time. Um, so you know, he's available next Wednesday to talk about this particular issue. Um, I think he was, when I did speak to him, he was trying to be encouraging, but I still don't know that I felt solidly encouraged just because it happened so fast. I think if this were six months from now, even, and, you know, we had had maintained a rate for a little while, I would have felt okay. But the fact that it's literally out the gate feels hard. So um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. I mean, I have now learned more about energy purchasing than I knew when we were when we did the bidding. And what I learned was we took we did bidding at exactly the wrong time because it's weather dependent. We have we are having a mild winter where you know that basically you know the pro projections are, would look a lot less expensive if we were trying to do procurement in February. Um, you know, and that's because you would have the history of the previous of, of most of the winter behind you and you would know how much you were filling the salt caverns with natural gas. I mean, this is all backward looking, right? We can't do anything about it. We've signed a contract. Um, but I will be honest, Knowing what I know now and feeling that we had paid a consultant to be the person who knows the things that you're supposed to know, it, it caused me to uh, re really be, it, it makes me worry about the expertise that we're drawing on. Oh, I'm going to, yeah, sorry, Ben, I'm going to jump we, in there though, because I, I think Paul had said, um, and maybe you hadn't been on a conversation with Paul, but he did say that it wasn't great timing, that our timing was not good. But we were sort of at a point with our application and where we were that it was kind of like a, that was the time frame we had to deal with at that point. Oh, so I think okay. he's aware. I mean, he's got a lot of experience, uh, you know, so I would say let's talk next week. I don't, you know, I think mm -hmm. we've been very, very fortunate to work with um, 
Paul. I think he has a lot of integrity and I think he worked okay. the best that he could. So um, we'll talk to him next week and we'll sort of, you know, my question to him is like, is there is there a way that we can maybe renegotiate or negotiate again at a certain point before the two years are up? I mean, obviously it's like an investment. You have to look at the long term, right? Because, right. you know, six months from now, we don't know. Eversource's rates may suddenly spike. You know, who knows? Uh, we just know that theirs is more volatile. Their pricing is going to keep changing where ours is steady. So even though it sort of feels a little gloom and, you know, gloomy right now, it doesn't mean that, you know, even next year at this time that, you know, the rates are going to be high or lower. So. Do we know if National Grid has announced their um, their rate? I don't know. And that was uh, one of the questions I had for Paul next next uh, next week. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. And basically that will determine whether I'm freaking out as much as Stephanie is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, you all, Northampton already with National Grid started out at a better than we did in terms of this rollout. So, um, you know, it was a much bigger savings for your right. residents than ours. Um, can I very quickly pull the group about the meeting next week? Is that um, going to work for folks? Is there anyone who can't do it? like everyone can do it. Okay, great. Yeah, I was just waiting. I thought, Ben, you looked like you might have been checking your calendar, so. Yeah, no, I, um, sure, well, I'll post it. Do I want to do it? Not a lot, but, I know. Uh, but yeah, I'll post I know. it. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, um, I've already posted it in Amherst, so I figured it, I could always cancel it if I had to, but, okay. so it's already posted. He's planning on meeting with us, so I think that'll be a good opportunity to have some of the concerns that were, you know, talking about today, even, you know, sort of um, broach some of those with, with him next week. Um, I just wonder, is there more that people feel the need to say now? I mean, I'm, I mean, concluding in this, I feel like, I still feel like we want the same things. I do too. Um, I just feel like, you know, as Bob pointed out, it's really just a matter of timing and I just think we need to just be patient. And I, I understand the climate emergency. I've been working on this issue since 2000, you know, working for the town on this issue since 2000. I get it because all of the models gave us, I mean, back then when I started, we had pathways and avenues to avoid this. We are absolutely even beyond the worst case scenario. So it's, I'm believe me, I'm plenty freaked out. But I, Amherst itself, if we do Amherst, Northampton, Pelham, our three little communities together, if we did all of the right things, you know, tomorrow, it's just sad, but it really is going to have so little impact. And it's doing the right thing. And I agree. Morally, I do feel that obligation to do the right thing. But I just feel like we just have to keep working towards it. And that's all I keep saying is as long as we're kicking that ball in the right direction, that's great. Um, it's not fast. You know, but I just don't know that we're going to, we're not going to solve, we are not going to solve this bigger global issue, but we just have to keep moving in the right direction as much as we can and working with other communities to encourage them to do the same. I mean, that's part of what my NEMS network is doing. So um, anyway, that's kind of where I'm, I'm at. Adele. I don't think any of us ever thought that we were going to solve the global problem, but we can make our communities more resilient in the face of what is going to happen. So that's that's really our goal. I agree, and it's a really important one. I totally agree. That's why we added resiliency to our climate action plan. So I totally agree. Um, yeah, certainly, the, I mean, that's certainly the perspective here in, in Northampton, and of course, resiliency is actually more local right i mean it's very very specific to like the topography you you're you're facing and you know thank god for some rain uh right now but um i still think it's worth thinking about what are the things that that lea and we want to accomplish that we think we can accomplish with the jpe 
But until we have the finances available from the CCA, JPEs may not be operable, right? So given that kind of that timing question that Bob is talking about, are there other ways that we can get ducks in a row? Because no matter what, it's about getting financing and financing is probably going to come from private sector third parties who who uh, want access to something. So if, if there's a, a deal that can be had that produces a uh, financial benefit for somebody who wants to, to pay for it, whether it's through tax uh, tax harvesting or, or whatever, there are those things out there. I mean, I'm trying to work those sorts of deals for the city uh, here, you know, and um, and in some cases I'm limited by, well, what does the city own and what can we actually control? And in some cases it might be that local energy advocates, which could eventually be a controlling partner of, or whatever, however you want to structure it as, as part of a JPE, could actually start looking at what are projects that could be put together, uh, you know, I don't know, there's a landowner and you could, you know, essentially act like a an oil prospecting landman and, and, uh, <laughs> and, and get, get a landowner to be interested in say a, a solar installation, find a financier who's willing to do it and, and leverage those things. And again, because you're, uh, I believe you now have a, a have incorporated, right? You, you're actually a, a 501c3 or you're associated with one oh not yet okay but well one well we do have a fiscal sponsor oh well close enough close enough then yeah so so the point being that it's possible to do a bunch of that stuff and then it's more about well where can the cities be helpful you know assuming it's within the territories of, of one of one of these entities where can we be helpful in permitting or um you know, or or uh, we, in some in some cases, I know uh, it, our planning director Car Carolyn Mish has been actually pretty good about finding little parcels of land that the city can buy and then devolve to another entity. Um, so, like, there are a bunch of things that can be done that don't necessarily require the CCA to be the the uh, the mechanism. Okay, any other thoughts? I remember that Paul Gromer, I believe, told us when he was a, a consultant to the task force um, that we could do any of the things that a JPE could do as municipalities. And we disagreed with that. And so, and and now I'm wondering uh, what our reasoning was, and uh, perhaps Dwayne or River might remember more, um, but we didn't like that idea, and um, he was pushing us to create a CCA, but separately to just do do whatever the municipalities wanted to do. I think that's where I'm coming from. So go ahead, Twain and River. I don't have any direct recollection of that. Um, you know, maybe perhaps it had something to do with um, trying to coordinate the three towns together on projects that they might want to collectively um, uh, benefit from and be, be involved with. But uh, I don't have any further recollection of that. Yeah, I don't remember that either. What what I am recalling and looking through the report, remembering that there was a call for a kind of a robust business planning process. This might get to what Ben was saying earlier around what are the costs associated with the CCA and administering it, including staffing and um, uh, budgeting and and marketing and consultants. So I'm I'm just curious because I haven't been at the table for the last few years if any kind of business planning process has been put into place where a 
it's just a hard look at what the costs and the revenues are now that the revenues are uh, a real question. What what can the CCA support and what does the JPA do to the cost side of that ledger? Um, so I, I agree, yeah, that that's sort of something that we do need to develop and needs to be developed. And we did a little bit of, you know, consulting with BCK, BCK law. Um, so we got some guidance, but I don't think it was enough. You know, I think what we, what we could do and maybe what could be a next step is that we do have the, um, earmarked funds that we could use to hire a consultant to develop a business plan. And I don't, I know people like to do things on their own, but honestly, I think it really works to work with a consultant who knows what they're doing. They can usually do it faster and we have lots of input in the process, but I'm not game for sitting meeting after meeting after meeting and hashing this out. Um, you know, that just, it takes too long. I think we've got some funds. Let's maybe do that with it. I think that's a really good use of those funds um, so that we could at least get something and then it'll give us a place to sort of work from and move forward. I still do feel personally like I want to see that aggregation more robust before we can launch it, but at least it'll give us something solid to work with. So how do folks feel about that? I'm sorry about my whiny dog. <laughs> yeah, could you repeat that, Stephanie? What would the consultant do? Um, that they could develop the actual business plan for the joint, for the JPE, like hire someone to develop a JPE business plan. Because I think we need, I think we were trying to work things out with information that we got and guidance that we had, but I don't think we were really... I mean, we're a smart group of people, but I don't think we had the expertise enough to be able to, um, sorry, to do that. So I think if we can hire, you know, we can put out, um, you know, we can put out an RFP and we can try to hire someone then to do that, to develop. I'd, I'd wait till you know what your potential income is from the CCA, you know, to get in the current situation, like how many people do we have? What's the, you know, you know like... Because that's what they need to work with is is what's what's the revenue going to look like, right? And I think some of the stuff that we sort of talked about earlier, um, we were just sort of speculating. We were just look, you know, looking at potential numbers and speculating, but we don't know. And I think especially now, that's why I want to have this meeting with Paul next week because I want to really have a sense of when can we get some of the answers to these questions. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Great. Well, I'd say please come with your questions for Paul next week. Um, yeah. You know, so Wednesday at 10 a.m. I've already sent you the agenda. So um, Pelham and Northampton, please post it. Um, post. Um, I sent it this afternoon um, and we'll just uh, I'll just see you all again uh, here on Zoom at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. And thank you all so much. I think, you know, I there's a lot of value in having these conversations, even when they feel hard sometimes, but I feel like, you know, really, we are all, I think we all want the same thing. And I think that's important to remember is we're all in this, we've been doing it together, we're in this together, and, you know, we want to move it forward and we will, we will, eventually we will. So well, thank you. thanks for all the all right. great everyone's doing. Take thank care. You. All right. Thanks all. Right. Bye.